It's a pleasure to be here with you this afternoon. And as I look out the window here next to us, I see the Hall of Sensors and MIMS, microelectronics, and I think about the opportunity we have in our business uh, to connect the factory of the future. And if, if you look at the vision I have for this company, I've been here now for 19 months. Uh, we made a lot of changes in the last 19 months, and we brought on quite a bit of talent. Um, I'd say that it, the real focus has been, for me, getting this company addicted to one monumental goal of mine, which is one word, and that's execution. And, and I think we've done a much better job within our business over the last um, 12 months in particular on focusing on a few priorities um, and executing on what we've had to do. And one would be, number one, would be putting the customer back at the heart of what we do. Uh, two is, is driving accountability within our business. We put P&Ls back in place, and three is operating for less and simplifying the things we're doing. But by putting the customer first, we've gone out and we've received more than 100,000 surveys from our customer base over the last 18 months. And one of the areas of opportunity for us is around improving the, the product lifecycle management, making it easier for our customers uh, to do business with us and, and being more proactive and going to them um, informing them of when something is going to become obsolete and offering substitutes or alternatives as opposed to them coming to us. So um, that's the focus of the discussion that we'll go through today is around product lifecycle management and a tool that we're launching officially today around the management of obsolescence. So we'll get into that detailed discussion next. But to start with, I just want to share with you kind of a quick snapshot of the vision that I have for this company. You know, we are a distributor of electronic products, electrical products, industrial products, from MRO to automation and controls. And some people will like to say, well, are you an electrical distributor? We said, well, no. Are you an electronics distributor? Yeah, kind of. Well, are you an industrial distributor? Maybe. The reality is we're, we're a combination of all. And in the past, you know, even I questioned whether those areas could coexist. And I think in the future, the answer is absolutely. And it's really about the convergence today of mechanical products and electronics. And, and that term most often used for that convergence is mechatronics, which, by the way, was a term that was coined um, not too recently. It was actually in 1971 um, by a Japanese engineer. So this business of, of the convergence and, and taking mechanical products and bringing connectivity to them is not something that started with Industry 4.0 or if it's not something they started with IoT, um, it has been around for quite some time. But it's finally becoming quite mainstream and calling it IoT certainly makes it sound a little bit more cool um, than, than the term mechatronics. But our goal, make no mistake about it, is we want to dominate um, the process of offering end-to-end -end solutions um, from mechanical products to electronics by using technology at the forefront of innovation um, and combining that with data-led insight. So when we look at our future, if we look at our vision, my vision, it's around dominating design, dominating the production or build segment for high mix, low volume, and for MPI activities. We are not going to get into volume distribution and compete with the likes of Aero, Avnet, Future. The margin is not attractive there for us, and we'll stay in a high mix, low volume environment where the margins are attractive across our entire portfolio. I believe this company um, has underinvested in its infrastructure, and I think we haven't had the right mix and balance in terms of where our focus has been. Um, however, I'll tell you, the market opportunity is substantial. Amazon estimates the MRO market to be at 7.3 trillion US dollars. So whatever the opportunity is for us, we know it, it's, it's much larger than what we thought it was in the past. So we will be a big player in design, We'll be a big player in the build side of things when it comes again to the high mix, low volume, and to MPI activities. And then we want to dominate the maintenance space. So across the globe, and the maintenance area of business, or indirect materials, as most people refer to it as, <clears throat> there is not one dominant global distributor. There's lots of regional players. In the US, Granger does a fantastic job. Um, in Germany, you have companies like Conrad that do a great job. But there's not one true global player across the maintenance side of the business and we want to fill that void and fill that gap. So for us it's really a focus again around three areas, design, build, maintain. In the future I think there could be on the back end of that focus on repair and warranty because I think there's a big opportunity in our industry for that. 
Um, and on the front end of that is innovation, is co-creation centers. And the companies like Daryl that I think are doing a fantastic job at the front end of innovation. So that's the vision I have. You'll see a very different RS moving forward. And for those of you that have been coming to this show um, in years past, I think you've seen already, I would hope, um, certainly a, a significant more um, uh, investment from us in branding. So we've got our truck here, Innovation in Motion, which I would encourage you to see if you haven't seen it. It's just on the other side here, when, when you walk out, um, we can take you down there if you want. Um, but it, it goes through the phases I just talked about. It gives you a hands-on experience to where we're going with those areas. Um, so at this point, I'll turn over uh, to Alistair, and he can take you through our new tool, and then we'll take some questions here at the end if you have any. Okay. Uh, firstly, can you all hear me okay? Yeah. I don't need the microphone. Um, so today I'm going to be talking about managing obsolescence, or, or more specifically, RS's solution to help our customers manage obsolescence. Um, before I get into that, I just wanted to do a brief introduction of Design Spark. So as Lindsay mentioned, that RS is about design, build, and maintain for our customers. Um, the DS community or Design Spark community, we're all about the design. We, we engage with engineers. Uh, um, we offer uh, free tools free resources and expertise. That's the principle of our community. Uh, and this is all through our, uh, our website, designspark.com. Uh, with a focus on um, providing convenience and practical solutions uh, to save time and money for our customers and uh, to also inspire and educate. Uh, so let me just try and bring that to life a little bit in, in terms of the real world. Uh, if you think of an engineer, uh, he has an idea and he needs to get it to a working prototype as quick as possible. Uh, they can come in and use our DesignSpark PCB software, draw up their design on a, on, a, on a PCB, export the PCB board out, get the board made, send the components to us, we'll deliver the components next day. Uh, they can then export that design out, put it into DesignSpark Mechanical, they can uh, put an enclosure around it, send it to a 3D printer, and they've got a working prototype in a very short space of time. And the only investment they've actually made has been on the actual components to build their solution. So that kind of gives you a snapshot. Uh, and just to add value to that, as they're going through that steps, the website is about inspiration, it's about getting insight, learning about the latest technologies. I think currently we have nearly 500,000 registered users. Uh, we've been running for about six years, so we, we, we've had sub substantial growth in terms of uh, the contacts engaging in our community. The split is roughly 20% education, 80% uh, engineers in, in the workplace. Um, we are basically going to be accelerating that. We're going to be looking to, to engage more, more users, more engineers, more students, more educators. The more people we get engaged in our community, the more we learn. The more we learn, the more we can innovate for them. So let's talk about obsolescence. Now, uh, the, the challenge of obsolescence is, is apparent. It's, it's an industry-wide problem. Um, and just to give you a, a, an example of how this works, you know, a typical customer will have tens to thousands of, of, of projects running simultaneously. If you think within each of, those, each of those products, they've got tens of thousands of components. Each one of those components at different stages of their life cycle, all coming from hundreds of different manufacturers. You know, it's a really challenging environment for our customers. I just want to call out some of these key metrics. So this is from our partner, IHS Market, who are providing the data that drives the back of our system. Uh, the average uh, IC life cycle is reduced to eight years in, in recent years. Uh, and we feel that's only going to continue as, as technology becomes uh, faster and, and things accelerate in the market. There are 28 PCNs issued each day, so product change notifications. 22 end of life notices issued each day. So as you can imagine, this obsolescence costs industry millions. So, Two key observations we've had in terms of the engineer's role. Uh, number one, that their role is becoming more diverse. You know, historically, you'd have an RF engineer, you'd have a power engineer, a mechanical engineer, a board layer engineer. Actually, nowadays, it's one engineer doing all of those functions, and they can't be an expert in all of them. And in increasingly, what we're seeing with, with, with the onsite of, of digital and the e-commerce world, they're actually venturing into the buyer space as well. So there's a commercial need there as well as a technical need. Uh, the other observation we have is that uh, um, obsolescence management starts at design. Uh, you, you want to make sure the components that are going into that design are sustainable for the length of the project that you're looking to deliver. And if we can help provide a solution that's going to help these guys do those particular things, 
they get a faster time to market in terms of it shortens their design cycle. Uh, reduced manufacturing costs, which inevitably um, increases their profitability against their product. But most importantly, it's better use of their time. Engineers get to do what they do best, and that's to innovate. And we hope to free up their time to focus their attention on that particular area. So what is uh, Design Spark uh, RS Obsolescence? Um, so basically, it's an engineering resource providing access to lifecycle across products that, that customers are purchasing from us across the complete RS range. We also offer alternative solutions to those products. There's three key areas I'm going to cover off today in terms of what we believe is the prime functionality of the tool. Uh, is build your parts list, manage your life cycle and select alternatives. So I'm going to go into a bit of detail of those three elements. Okay? So in terms of building your parts list, uh, we have uh, within the system millions of pieces of technical resource. That's designed to help engineers choose the right product from a technical perspective. But what we're doing differently now is bringing in life cycle and putting that alongside those technical information. By giving that, we're giving them the, the ability to make commercial decisions about using the right product. And then finally, building the parts list so they can build up this parts list as they're working through. Once they get that parts list in our system, that's when the power of the system really comes to life. So what do I mean by that? What we're offering is once they have that parts list saved against their login, uh, we will give them a snapshot of where the life cycle is today against their parts list in the system. So that gives them a snapshot of where they are today. So they give, us, they give the system three pieces of information, start date of a project, lifetime of a project, uh, and volume. We'll then tell them predictive uh, um, life cycle risk. So is these, are these parts going to last the duration of your project? And then finally, they can come back and review the updates to, to the life cycle as we progress. We'll be updating this data on, on an ongoing basis so that they're always getting access to the latest information. Clearly, as they're going through that process, they will come across problem parts. And one of the other functions we offer is alternative solutions to those parts. We have over 70 million alternative products available for customers to review. They can review and select the alternatives very easily. It's a very simple process just to switch the product out of their parts list. And the alternatives are all categorized suitably into four key categories. First one being form, fit, and function. Uh, this is where our partners IHS use, it's about four or 500 engineers you, you have. They, it's been validated by an engineer to say, yes, this is, this is the same part. Secondly, direct replacement. This is based on attribute data. So it's a systematic approach to it. Slightly less accurate, but it's still a credible uh, result. Functional equivalence, so functionally it's the same, but it might be a different, slightly different form and fit. And then finally, a similar product, which is everything else that, that has one or more uh, equivalents, uh, same attributes. So where does it fit? So this is a standard design cycle. Uh, most customers will typically run through something similar to this. And obviously, we talked about design, build, and maintain. Down the left-hand side, Design Spark is about the design element. RS is about the build and maintain. That's where, when they, can, when they want to purchase those products, that's when RS steps in. And the reason we positioned it in the early part of the design stage is purely based on the functionality we have at release, right? So it is about the engineer initially. Um, but I'll talk a little bit about the future now. So what does the next steps look, for, look like for us the next year? So we're going to expand the product coverage. We'll be looking at around about two or 300,000 new products uh, against the RS range into the, into the system. We'll be offering multiple stuff, part search, so they'll be able to upload multiple parts, fill of materials, uh, and get access to those lifecycle. We'll offer a one-click purchase. So once they've got their parts list, they can per press a button, take straight through to the transactional site, and purchase all those components in one hit. And then finally, share with colleagues. This is a feedback we get frequently from engineers that we, they wish we could share the, their parts list, their work that they're doing with other colleagues in the business. And then finally, and most importantly, we'll be listening to what our users are saying. So whatever they're telling us, wh whatever's being shouted about loud enough, they're the things that we'll look to do in the system as we progress. And if we do those things, what we feel is then you start to cover off the whole design cycle. So if you consider a, a, a buyer, loading parts one by one is probably a bit of a problem for them. But they have a system, an MRP system, where they have 10,000 components in. They'll be able to bring those in in bulk and monitor them on an ongoing basis. So it becomes attractive to a buyer when we put that in. And likewise for a maintainer. You have a machine on a production line. 
The only time they'll find out a part's gone obsolete is when it breaks, and they've then got to go and purchase that part to try and fix their tool. Whereas if we could actually proactively monitor though, that machine and keep track of the, uh, the life cycle within the components, they can mitigate that risk as they're going forward. <coughs> so just to summarize what we talked about, uh, quickly summarize your parts list in terms of life cycle risk and life, lifetime risk. Proactively mitigate risk of obsolescence, uh, anticipate component end of life issues, and find solutions to trouble parts. That's what the system's all about. And what we believe that's going to offer our customers is faster time to market through more efficiencies in the design cycle, reduced manufacturing costs, uh, uh, increased profitability, and uh, as I said, most importantly, it's about enabling the engineer to do what they do best, and that's to innovate. <laughs>